Um, now we're going to talk about um, the group trends of atomic size. Now, for instance, I'm going to take the first group on the periodic table, uh, group 1A. Now, group 1A, because it's in uh, group 1A, it, they do have common traits, and one of the common characteristics of group 1A is that they all have one valence electron. A little E for electron. Now, the first element in group 1A is in the first period, and that's hydrogen. First period, and in group 1A. Hydrogen, we know the atomic number is one. One proton in the nucleus. And then that electron that it has is on the first energy level, which I'll designate as n equals 1 for the principal quantum number, and there's one electron. Now, as I move down the group, the next element that comes in the second period is the element lithium. Lithium's atomic number is 3, so it has three protons in the nucleus, so much more of a positive charge inside the nucleus. Now, on the first energy level, there are two electrons. First energy level, again, I'll represent as n equals 1. And we know that that holds two electrons because of the 1s orbital that it has filled. Now, the second energy level begins to fill, which I'll represent as n equals 2 for the second principal quantum number. And we know that there's one electron in here. So if you take a look at the atoms hydrogen and lithium, you can clearly see that lithium is going to be larger um, for two reasons. We have more electrons, and we have a greater energy level being filled, a higher energy level, one that is further away from the nucleus. And um, looking at sodium, you're going to see a common factor here because we're going to get increasingly more electrons in between the outermost and the positive charge of the nucleus. And these electrons right here between the outermost electron and that positive charge of the nucleus is going to be known as causing a shielding effect. It is literally blocking this negative particle right here from being attracted to the positive charge of the nucleus. So a true definition of the shielding effect is that the inner or core electrons, these right here, they actually shield the positive charge of that nucleus from that outermost valence electron. Now let's take a look at sodium. Atomic number is 11, so it has 11 protons in the nucleus. The first energy level, again, has two electrons on it. The second energy level has eight electrons. And the third energy level is now currently being filled, and we know that because of the principal quantum number is three. It is in the third period. We know that the third energy level is currently being filled. And we know that there's one electron in that. So you can clearly see that this valence electron is much further away from the positive charge of the nucleus because look at all the electron-electron repulsions going on. All of these electrons right here are considered part of the shielding effect, which is blocking the positive charge of the nucleus from attracting this outer electron, trying to keep it within the atom. So this electron is much more loosely held than the others. So again, this valence electron is pushed away by the electron-electron repulsions because negatives always uh, repel. And this electron is attracted somewhat to the positive charge of the nucleus, and that's what's keeping it inside of the atom. However, that positive charge is basically blocked by all of these other electrons involved in the shielding effect. So as you move down a group, the common trend is that the atomic size is going to increase because higher and higher energy levels are being filled. They're filling a greater principal quantum number. And the shielding effect also um, increases, which blocks and pushes that outer electron a little bit further from the nucleus, creating a larger boundary of the atom.